On this week's episode of Friend Code, we're answering your questions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Friend Code. I'm your host, Michael Damiani, and this week I'm joined by Michael Huber. Hello. Ian Hank. Hello. And uh, we're going to answer some questions submitted to us from patrons. Ah. $5 and up patrons, you nice. can submit questions to us. Must Each be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> must be very nice. Swimming in five. When I put out that call for questions the week of our recording. So look out for that post of your five, uh, $5 and up patron. Um, just real quick, there was another week, another episode and no real major news from Nintendo again. Um, last time we did something a little bit fun. We did uh, imaginary achievements and we did a whole oh, rating yeah. game and stuff like that. <laughs> but we did a segment at the beginning where we did like a flash news segment. We ran down all like the mini headlines. I didn't really want to do that again. There was like there was no like attention grabbing headline stuff out there for this week. And uh, that you know it's a slow news with the Nintendo sometimes. Yeah, it's just... slow and steady. Yeah. Bunch of little games came out. Yeah, a bunch of little stuff came out. Uh, we played Super Mario Party last yeah. week. That's a big release that did yes. come out. Had a grand old time with that. Dude, I loved it. It's that. the best Mario Party in a very, very long time, yeah. so it's it's very nice. Good to hear the positive yeah. vibes about that it's, because... It's oh. somehow simultaneously less frustrating and less fair. It seems like it seems like Which it's more impossible. random. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's an chaos. impossibility. And f- funny maybe, chaos. Maybe we're just older now, so yeah, we, we, we know. Yeah, we're just we're, we're, we're able to temper to our emotions more. <laughs> we're we're perhaps. fine with it, but uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll see. There, it's getting up on the point where there's got to be like another Smash Direct coming. They got a new Pokemon game coming out. Two new Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu. Pe- Pe- Pokemon. Let's go Eevee next month. Yeah. So they're probably gonna do one like one right, blah, blah, one last direct for that. When's that you come know, out? November. That comes out uh, towards the end of November. Okay. And uh, Dali, yeah, Dali, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the holiday Nintendo Switch bundle is going to be this year? Well, they uh, have. They just announced a uh, Blizzard announced a Diablo, Diablo yeah. three bundle. There's the Fortnite bundle. There's the Smash Brothers bundle already, and there's the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. It's a lot of bundles. So there, all the bundles are already known. Nice. Is there's there a been, Let's Go Pikachu EV? bundle with a s- system and the ball, or just the bundle with the ball? Forget if it comes with that. I just saw the headline that they're all getting one. Yeah, yeah. Tender's just doing this. It just works. 100 and bucks for that ball controller and the game seems... Like, it makes sense, I guess. It's 40 bucks for the thing and 60 for the game, but well, man. I, I, I don't know... I expect more than just me will be checking out the Pokemon Let's Go games. I'm, I'm actually, going to. I'm going to try and review it. You always surprise me. You always surprise me. I love that you're like so in on that. Like yeah. the, the Pokemon ball, dude. Everyone's awesome. so down on it. Yeah. I don't know. It looks fun. And <laughs> I never played the original Pokemon. so Definitely. Not only am I going to be Sick. starting playing the game that way yeah. uh, when I review it, but uh, also hope that we can maybe do like a... A group stream of us having to like play with the ball. Oh yeah, that'd be <laughs> like, great. Just taking turns and stuff, just having a good old time being Pokemon trainers. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe more news next time. Uh, I can't make the news happen, but we're gonna answer your questions. Or and... can we? Oh no, let's, no, let's not play <laughs> with that power. <laughs> Ooh, history has shown how dangerous that can be. Make some phone calls. <laughs> Our first question comes from Jesse Abraham. Do you think Nintendo and Ubisoft will have another Mario and Rabbids like uh, surprise next E3? What kind of crossover do you think it would be? Feel free to go nuts and make something especially controversial for fans to go said go nuts again uh, when it gets leaked. I got some. <laughs> oh, Huber is prepared. I got some. Okay, Huber, what do you got? Here we go. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Whoa, is ready. For some kind of, I mean, Mario Odyssey. I, yeah, like when he said, <laughs> "Can we stop real quick?" You said yeah. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. I, I was like, I'm "Mario yeah. Assassin's Creed." I was like, "Mario Creed. Assassin's Creed." Okay, the crazier things have happened. Mario right? with the hood. Assassin's Creed Origins had a full-on Final Fantasy 15 mm-hmm. quest line that was nuts. Like Arden came down, you could get Noctis's sword. So whoa, that's weird. Yeah, right. So the fact that you know this yeah. uh, relationship between Nintendo and Ubisoft seems n- genuine and yeah. and committed and long term. Committed and long term. Uh, I would n- a- and the fact that un- like uh, Origins had a kind of a life after it released, but Odyssey is they're really committed they've already said next year there's not going to be an assassin's creed and that they yeah. really want people playing assassin's creed odyssey for like a year you know the the dlc has been laid out 
every six weeks there's like a chapter there's a couple big story things coming out so it's ready for long term growth uh huh so what's your idea so throwing in some crazy Mario Odyssey connection (laughs) I I, I really think they could lean into so into the the internet so let me get this let me try and envision this Hubert yeah is Mario gonna dress like in an assassin's outfit or attire <laughs> as close to possible and go around an environment like that. Like he's gonna sneak up on Goombas and Koopa Troopas I, I think and do like stealth kills, like leap of <laughs> faith thing and stuff. I, I think you you'll be able to get some like Mario costumes okay. or something. Uh, maybe they'll fool around with some weapons, like they could have uh, like a hammer or something. Yeah. Knocking down uh, walls and stuff like yep. that. Yep. Standing up there, just going, mm-hmm. that'd be kind of fun. I'm ready for it. You got any ideas, Ian? I mean, I think, I, I don't know the sales numbers necessarily on uh, hey, we're going Kingdom nuts. Battle. We're going know about sales. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I assume, I think that a, a Kingdom Battle 2 would be kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. And I think I think that if Rayman himself showed up and maybe some mm. of his other friends showed up in there, I also would not be surprised by a Just Dance-inspired uh, either joke or mini game or cutscene within uh, oh. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle Two, um, yeah. I I, do, I just see th- I see them doing it again, but with as many more ancillary characters that they can put into it as possible. All right, uh, that would yeah. be my realistic guess. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I was going to mention that the probably the most realistic thing is a sequel to Mario yeah. and Rabbids. Feels like it's definitely going to happen. Uh, recently released Starlink has uh, oh, yeah. Star Fox integration into it. Not just tacked on, like yeah. full cutscenes, lots of VO. Can play the whole game from start to finish as Fox and friends. But so maybe you can take a crack at Star Fox. But I think, just thought of it now, because uh, I wanted to go crazy with this. Yeah. All right. We're going to go with the division here. Yeah. And we're going to have Samus playable in the division with the var- the various was... suit going around leading a squad and stuff. And in the division, people got to go against some of like the, the Phazon corrupted uh, enemies and stuff from Prime. Yep. Shows up. Okay. I, was, I was thinking something similar, but with Watch Dogs, where like Watch Samus can like hack into mm. stuff, you know? Watch like Dogs she 3. falls back in time or something. Watch Dogs like, 3 should be coming next year. Yeah. I feel Watch like Dogs maybe. 3. Yeah, I feel like it. Good stuff. I love that. <laughs> Watch Dogs 3. Will, yeah. Any chance Watch Dogs 3 will come to Switch? Oh. Yeah, because can't you stream Origins but only in Japan on yeah. Switch? Yeah. Yes. We, or we, Odyssey, sorry. We got a question about that okay. coming up, but. Got it. Uh, I, I guess I meant more specifically, mm-hmm. do you think a physical or digital copy will like come to Switch? Or is that one of those multi platform games that's going to stick to. Uh, Microsoft and Sony and probably and you know not Nintendo's platform. My gut says it's not, but my my heart. I'm gonna say yes because of my heart and because it's Ubisoft. But, but five months late. Five months late. Yeah, later. All later right. down the line. All right. All right. We'll see. Yeah. Um, our next question comes from. They were very nice to put in parentheses how to pronounce their name. Varun Kachwaha. What would you advise? For me to wait for the rumored Switch revision or oh. just buy the current edition now. Mm. I'm not exactly desperate to buy the Switch with my PlayStation managing to keep me occupied with so many great games coming out. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't mind having one to play during lunch or during my commute. It's just that I would rather have the best version and wouldn't really like buying what would pretty much be the same thing twice. Thanks. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough call. You've already made it so far. Right. Uh, they're like, we were talking about the bundles. Mm -hmm. I, over my console buying life have waited for bundles and I I always feel really good about it. You know, you wait for a deal. Yeah. You wait for a deal. But, um, you know, you're, you're the expert Damiani. Do you think a a new revision is imminent? It really depends on. There's a rumor that it's coming, but we don't know if it's like a light version Mm -hmm. or like a souped up version. Absolutely. No idea what it's going to be. The rumor is it comes out the second half of next year. That's far. Um, That's far. That's listen, far. like there's there's no like there's no rumor, no like information leaked or rumored one way or the other. Mm-hmm. I will say though, given that it's viewed as a hybrid and also as like it's like a, a mobile system as well as like a docked console, 
I don't see, uh, my gut tells me not to bet on it being a, a power upgrade. Right. It's not, it's, I, here's the thing. I, I, my more in depth answer for this will be saved for a later question, but I, I would wager it's not going to have more power behind it. So my advice would be it might, it might, like, it might have like a brighter screen. So, yeah, or something, something like, like that. Something like I, 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 my favorite thing about the new PS4 is is uh, like a quieter fan. Right. You know. Right. Like, like yeah, better heat sinking. Yeah. Brighter screen. Maybe like ten percent better battery think life. Like DS Lite. Better or like, Wi-Fi. Like the smaller. Yeah. Like the 3DS. Uh, not the new ones, but like the 3DS revisions. But also like the right. DS Lite, like a different form factor and everything like that comes with that. But I, yeah, my advice to you would definitely be if you're not in a rush, then you know just wait a bit longer. Yeah. I mean, there's those great games on Switch aren't going anywhere. There's only going to be more. But it looks like you're going to be waiting a year if you decide to wait. And, yeah. And like yeah. I would say, wait for details about the new one to see, like yeah. make an informed decision. So mm-hmm. I do think if you can wait, wait for details. Exactly. But. If, Black Friday. If you really do, yeah. If you really do want one, Black Friday and Christmas bundles will have deals. Probably not astro- astronomical. Probably like fifty, sixty dollars savings, or bundled Cyber with a game Monday. for free or something. Um, so if you're really chomping at the bit, which it doesn't sound like you are, I'd say wait for the sales. Mm-hmm. But they're clearly, obviously, they're not going to put out any concrete information about the new version until after the holiday yeah. season because they don't want to cannibalize oh, yeah. their own sales. Yeah, so, definitely makes sense. Um, if I if I were in damn your, you marketers, yeah, right? <laughs> if I were in your situation, uh, I, I personally I would wait. I would wait for more information. I wouldn't jump in just yet. Though, like, it sounds we're like freaks. Good time. Yeah, we yeah. buy things like day one, I guess, because we have to. Yeah, but, like, like ignoring our profession right, and stuff right, like right. that. <laughs> I would like try to put myself in your shoes. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you're having a great time with PlayStation. Um, it sounds like you just want something to kill some time, like you said during like your commute, um, or you know during lunch, something for like short intervals, essentially. It, I, I don't imagine it's going to change for you in a year, probably. So, right. yeah. Plus, just, like, just Spider Man DLC, Red Dead Redemption, Sekiro, like, there are stuff's like, coming. Uh, yeah, you have a, at least yeah. one big thing every month until after f- March of next year. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds <laughs> like it's a, it's like a secondary, like, a desire to yeah. your hobby. And for <laughs> those things, I would, and if you know something's on the horizon, you, yeah, yeah, my advice is just wait, wait it out a little bit. Yeah. You know what's on the horizon? What's on the horizon? Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn's on the horizon. <laughs> I was yeah. Wow. Wow, I see it, Huber. <laughs> Ian brings out the uh, the dad jokes in yeah, me again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to do another one of those "Don't laugh" episodes. That was, that was funny. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Huber. It was good. It was good. Uh, next question comes from Alexander Zernoff. Do you see Nintendo releasing a cardboard VR for Switch? Whoa. Where you put the switch unit into the thing? Yes. Cardboard just as like a term, it couldn't actually. Yeah. yeah. It's too heavy f- yeah. for it to be. I want to. Uh, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. Does, I got. I got some quotes and stuff. Oh wait, like, does the robot thing? Labo. Yeah, but does the robot version have the switch in front of your eyes? No, you're looking at the TV still. I thought you were. Now I can't. But I mean, like, there's still like this. There's nothing to stop. I think this from happening. Sure, I, I would just yeah. say that. Even using my Samsung Gear VR with the back off, my face gets really hot because the phone yes. heats up. Oh yeah, and like, so having that kind of a, a, a heating element strapped to your face sucks. So like doing that with the Switch, which gets fairly warm, would kind of blow. Having a screen that close to your eyes, for yeah, I don't can't love be it. Very yeah, good for them either. You're hurting my eyes thinking about, I know. about those eyes, Huber. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean like keep those eyes open. <laughs> Yeah, the red-eyed coyote will I appear at the Zona Norte at the far end ago. of town. I need to rewatch Cowboy Bebop, uh, man. I love it so up. much. It doesn't need to be um, like VR ready before that happens. Like it's already you can slap the cardboard thing on, and it's in theory in you just theory, need right? to design a game that does the split screen Got eyeball it. thing, and then you're. Got I it. I would say like Nintendo hasn't been on the 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 VR tip or whatever and like i don't see them really starting now it's definitely yeah. possible the switch i think would be slightly too heavy for this to be enjoyable uh and it would get very warm even take off the joy cons and stuff just to make the, yeah. the tablet part but yeah you, you kind of like but hit. i mean they did labo so i the, i would not have predicted sliding the switch into a cardboard piano definitely something out there yeah definitely <laughs> something creative and unique uh, Nintendo, there, there have been different people within Nintendo have spoken about like VR and their stance on it. Oh. Um, just give a few quotes just to help uh, paint the picture a little bit more. So uh, the former Nintendo president, uh, Kimishima, said that the company 
um, was looking into virtual reality space at an investors meeting back in 2016. And that kind of got people thinking, oh, maybe the, this upcoming, you know, what, you know, the, now we know at the Switch was going to, oh, might have VR and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a this odd Nintendo patent for a head-mounted tablet holster that oh. all, surfaced in late 2016. Um, and I think that's when speculation hit like a, a favorite pitch about whether or not the Switch was going to have, or Nintendo was going to do some device that has it. Yeah. But then in 2017, uh, Reggie fils told Fortune that when it comes to VR, are they both fun and social? I don't think that's there yet. And casting some doubt on that. Keep talking, nobody explodes. And then, uh, <laughs> what? Fun and social. Yeah. Keep talking, and nobody explodes. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, VR can get there. And then earlier this year, uh, Nintendo France's general manager stated, if you look at VR headsets, I doubt they can appeal to the mainstream. Consumers are not patient with entertainment if you're not able to deliver an all-inclusive package. So they, they've, they've obviously shown some interest um, in it, but I don't know if that's just like, hey, you know, we're always looking into new stuff. We're always considering it just to, you know, basically like a non-answer. Yeah. But the other statements seem a little bit more strongly worded in that, yeah, we're not really into this right now. So I don't see Nintendo officially doing something like this. This would have to be like a third party. Yeah. Uh, or a publisher. I can see like it. a yeah. Starlink or somebody coming out yeah. with a VR yeah. headset. Because, I mean, like, you can. Yeah. You'd probably but, uh, have to put the Joy-Cons on for the gyro. I forget the specifics. That, uh, hackers just one found some kind of built-in VR functionality in the switch actually but really it was either limited or there's some like catch to it or something oh, weird so oh, it, that, it, yeah that's something i haven't even thought about is the does the switch unit itself have a gyro in it or is it just using if you're in handheld does it just oh, use the joy cons joy cons yeah, yeah yeah okay so it doesn't you'd have to you'd have to then have the joy cons on the thing or it wouldn't be able to sense your movement oh yeah Unless they made new things that hooked onto them or something right. like that, yeah, like, like the yeah, unit itself yeah. would have to, yeah. So yeah. I mean, that would drive the cost up. If the if the headset unit has to have the gyro and sensors in it, it would drive the cost up. Probably my guess would be they would pull a labo and just like put one of the Joy Cons on there. Um, hmm. It seems cumbersome. I don't know, but then again, they're making that Game Boy phone holder, so supposedly. they're branching out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, supposedly. Uh, yeah, we will definitely see. I definitely uh, thought VR would be bigger now than it is, like a year or two. I'm kind of not now. surprised because it's just I'm like on not the boat of not surprised. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really surprised because oh, it just. It was, I thought it was gonna take off with PSVR and yeah. stuff. Yeah, like Reggie said though, it's it's kind of just not there yet. I mm-hmm. think, and it's it's cumbersome. It's just too irritating to do. And like I've done lots of VR experiences that I've really loved. Yeah, especially of the Vive. I think for my money, the Vive is the best hands down. But like. Yeah, it's still you just have to like set everything up. It's you have to have the headset. It's, it's like a such it's a, a pain. it's a choice, you know. Yeah. Like I have I have a hard time sometimes if I'm in a, like a lazy mood, like putting a new disc in a console, <laughs> like setting up a whole headset. Like, come on. That's yeah. I think that's <laughs> the biggest thing. Even with like uh with like 3D. Yeah. Like I think people were okay with it like on something like a 3DS or the TVs that just did it. But when it came to like having to use like glasses and stuff yeah that's just that's just a, one extra step that like people are just lazy enough they just want that like convenience of not having to do that extra step that is just that's like the hurdle that, you, that that's what's holding them back you clear that and it would have like done better i i mean we need some we need some disney world imagineers to come in and and do the actual math on like like i don't know if this is true but the rumor is they've they've figured out the distance the maximum distance a person will walk to throw something away and spaced out Got all the garbage cans oh just gosh. under that distance, the average distance, you know. And obviously, they have like an army of people cleaning up litter too. But like, yeah. I love stuff like that, whether yeah. true or not. That kind yeah. of that thought oh, process wow. to me is so cool. Yeah. You need someone like that to come in with at VR and be like, okay, what's the minimum threshold that someone will do? And That's I think really for today's society, it's basically almost nothing. <laughs> for that, kind maybe of thing. one day. Our next question comes from Straw Hat Ninja. Nice greetings, allies. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze re-released on Switch earlier this year, and like you guys, I absolutely loved it. My question is, what is next for Donkey Kong Country, with Retro supposedly working on a Star Fox racing game? Personally, I would love to close out the trilogy with a return of the Kremlings and King K. Rule, but if Retro doesn't make the game, who would, or who should, and when will we see it, love and respect? And, uh, I, I can get this off really quick. I want to say, 
uh, I, I think Retro is still working on it. Yeah. I don't see why not. I, I think agree. they could be working yeah. on multiple projects. And the reason I think they will still be working on a third Donkey Kong Country game, uh, one for Switch, is because Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze sold on Switch sold extremely well. Yeah. It outsold the Wii U version uh, in two we- after two weeks of sales in, <laughs> in Japan. So after being on sale for two weeks in Japan, the Switch version of Donkey Kong, Tro- Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze outsold the entirety of the Wii U's run there. Uh, <laughs> it charted number four in the April NPD in North Redemption. America. Number yeah. two best-selling uh, Switch product behind Labo, which had like that explosive right. month. Um, and, uh, Plus cost way more. It sold extremely well in the UK. It charted on the tar- uh, charts there. It, w- it outperformed the Wii U version significantly. And I know there are people who aren't happy about it being a full-price port of a several-year-old game. But what this did is it showed Nintendo that there's a lot of value in this series still. Yeah. And I will be shocked if they're just going to let that like sit on the shelf and not go back to it one more time, especially on the Switch. 100% agree. Yeah. 1,000% agree. Yeah. But as far as anyone else actually handling it, I mean, any of the, the developers who, who have uh, proven themselves with uh, 2D games, I would say like Yacht Club Games. I'd say... Uh, yeah. Uh, the people made... Uh, why am I forgetting their name? The people made Shantae... They, oh. They're right by. Yeah. Uh, I know who you mean, but I can't remember the name either. Right now. Way forward. Thank you. Yeah, way forward. There my, we go. Myself told me that. Uh-huh. Um, heck, even a, uh, even another team in Nintendo, like an internal team, uh, could take a crack at it as well. But I, I think Retro should yeah. get the third one. If they, and I do, but I do also agree with all the the reveal for Smash Brothers with King K. Rule. It, they should bring King K. Rule back as a development. Yeah, yeah. Like, fin- close it out Finale, strong. Dude. Close out strong with that. Yes. Amazing hype right there. What, fran- yes. what franchise were we hoping that Yacht Club would do? Was it Castlevania? I think we've yeah. talked about Castlevania and Metroid. And Metroid, Metroid. yeah, yeah. Have been the ones that have hey, always been like, give it tossed to around. Do it. Dude, Curse of the Moon, was it? The Bloodstained one? Yeah, Bloodstained one, yeah. God, Curse of so the that, Moon. But that wasn't them, though. No, 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 no. That yeah. was... Uh, but, oh, that game is so uh, What is it? Who did that one? It's... um. What she uh, Inti creates, yeah. Inti creates. Yeah. Uh, they did the Curse of the Moon. This is the, uh, the yeah the Ega project. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They just, just dropped it out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Like yeah, we're still working on Bloodstain, but uh, yo, here's yeah. this. Uh, Which is not like I I talked to to Ega about it at an interview, and I was like, so this is a prequel, and he goes, no, no, it's actually like a side story, completely. Yeah. Like parallel dimension, which is so funny is. <laughs> Fun like, stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's a, that's a good way to take Those it. Those games are like cool, it. man. Yeah, they're really fun. Uh, actually, recently just uh, deleted off my uh, Steam on my PC because uh, I was going through my library and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I had a good time with that. I also, oh, the Curse of the Moon? Yeah, yeah, I it yeah twice. you beat it like eight times. Yeah, yeah so like Brad Did you, were, were, like you guys, yeah, were you guys Were you guys backers of Bloodstain? Because I, I got no, the backer uh, demo. I've it's only really cool. backed one thing ever on Kickstarter. It, uh, it was, uh, no, it was a book, uh, The Untold History of like uh, Japanese Video Games. So um, you didn't back a little card game called Swords, no. down there? No. The problem was, the, uh, I mean, it was a great, it was a great book, and it delivered. But the updates started to become like very, uh, like personal, like issue stuff with a, a oh. person it involved the project, but it was about litigation between oh, whoa. him and uh, a translator, and it got into all this drama. And I was like, I don't really care about this. Wow. So we still got some like, drama oh, with some like projects, that. and then all this stuff about like the games that a few games came out that like were. Hey, we took the money and ran, and I'm like, okay, oh yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna stay away from Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a very stressful thing. I mean, yeah. I did a Kickstarter for my car- card game, and like we got it out, the card game out, but there are still some two rewards that we still have to give out, just because the artist has been getting a lot of work constantly, so he's been too busy to make the. We have to do the art prints, okay. And then I've been working constantly, so I haven't finished the video game version, like the RPG Maker game, oh, nice. and it's like weighing on my mind always. Yeah. It's like driving me crazy slowly. Yeah, it seems but it's gonna happen. Successful. It just takes forever. I, I, yeah, I, obviously, I've bought games that were kickstarted that were kickstarted right, right. after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, it's Banner. good. Yeah. yeah, some of the yeah. some of the best games have been kickstarted. Some of the best, yeah. of course. Some of the greats. I just bought a uh, N64 controller that was kickstarted originally. Oh, really? Yeah, like a modern take on the N64 controller, and it's nice. pretty good. Our next question comes from uh, Stefan. Do you think Nintendo will make the online service better in the future for the Switch, or do we have to wait for another console until things like voice chat will happen without you needing a smartphone? <laughs> the voice chat thing I forgot about. I mean, I, d- I think obviously they're going to add SNES games to their uh, at some point. The collection at some point. 
They, they um, mentioned it. Uh, yeah. But it's like since has kind of like vanished. And like maybe in 64, but I don't know. Um, as far as the voice chat goes, I, I feel like they have some weird like logic about it. Like, like Sony's excuse of like not doing Fortnite co play or uh, crossplay, crossplay because like they can't police the interactions or whatever. I, I would not be surprised if, if that's Nintendo just like not wanting that responsibility on them directly or something. I don't I, know. I think I think that's what it is, Ian. Yeah. That we've seen this before. Uh the th- things happen with like uh with a me verse messages. Right. That Picto chat as well was another right. infamous one where they're like, Sorry about this, uh you know, too many immature people drawing dick pics essentially. It's yeah. like we gotta like we don't wanna police that and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh I, I think specifically when it comes to like the voice chat um, there, I mean, there's a history of Nintendo offering voice chat. Just real quick, uh, like some games have supported it on previous systems, like Monster Hunter Try and uh, e- HD on Wii and Wii U supported voice chat. Uh, Wii came with that like voice box thing, wasn't the greatest thing. Uh, Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl on DS supported voice chat oh, through the, like the microphone of DS. A lot of yeah, 3DS games, thing, and right? 3DS games have done it as well. I mean, they have done it for spe- in specific instances built into the system and software. Game, game, but I think yeah. what they're envisioning is like what you get on like Xbox right. or PlayStation. You're, I don't think you're ever going to get that. No, I don't no. think you're ever going to get that with Nintendo. And at least not for like the foreseeable future. Yeah, like it'll take like a radical shift in their business practices and philosophy. Yeah. I would say. Um, I also want to add that. Uh, I want to talk about like online. This question asked, well, what can you do to, do to be better for online? Mm. I still think it was a mistake for them. I mean, I guess they don't have a strong enough offering of like new games to warrant right now uh, paying for online if they didn't force people to pay for previously released games with online as well. Um, I, I think at some point, I mean, it'll be too late, but I thought they should have just made like Splatoon 2, Mario Kart 8, Deluxe, just make like those games. Free, still, still free to play sure, online. Yeah. Anything going forward from that release date uh, um, earlier on last month till whenever Switch service ends, you have to pay for that. So I thought I think that was a big misstep, especially for Splatoon yeah. Two. But I think like you one, said, they don't have anything besides Smash like on the horizon that would even warrant the cost. Yeah, I, I, I they should. I guess they wanted a few months under their belt before unleashing Smash, uh, like with the, yeah. the online Nintendo's all about knowing that one game is enough right you know right it's like we got smash we're fine like yeah. i mean really as long the, as online's out yeah the real true answer is they should have put they should have just had the online system immediately mm-hmm. like that's before a, all that's, that's a, the real answer that's another yeah. big criticism i have of them is why did this take so long right like, we've been this it's a dead horse it's right a, it's yeah. a dead horse yeah. like i don't know why but i'm sure there's some back-end answer yeah. but yeah um i think it'll get better at least I gotta hope. The main boon is that it's twenty bucks. Yeah, it's not to that me. Expensive. It's like I don't play any of those games online really, or at all on Switch. So it's like I don't need to pay it for that. Yeah. If they do start putting SNES titles on there and that other stuff, that would be the 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 push for me to start paying. So for yeah, them. I'm personally right now. I'm personally happy with the fact I'm getting new NES games every month. Yeah. Uh, I do play the the NES selection. Do they add or do they take them away? Uh, they haven't. They're, they haven't said anything about taking it away. Okay, okay. But who knows? If they're just but adding they're adding forever. Yeah, they're just adding new ones. Although one of them was a special version of the original Legend of Zelda, which it, you basically start the game with a bunch of items. So it's like mm-hmm. an easier mode version of it. Kind of a cool concept. Yeah. Of Damiani, did, did you see the thing I posted in Slack from Indiecade? The um, Octopad. Oh, yes, I did see that. Sorry, I did see that. There was, yes. a, there was a guy at Indicate who yes, made I saw what an that NES is. controller that has eight, eight cables yeah. and eight controllers, and each controller has one button on it. <laughs> we played Tetris with it, and it was phenomenal. It was the most fun ever. I would love to do something if we ever get our hands on it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like a like dude who made it by oh, himself. Such a fun experiment. But to like, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just imagine like Zelda or something with that thing would be so yeah, funny. This op- like this opens up the idea for them to do fun, creative stuff with older games. As yeah. Well. Like we had, a, they did a whole game series, NES Remix, doing crazy stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing could live on that. So I'm personally happy with with that part of the service. Uh, we criticize the other things, but the biggest thing, I it's not necessarily. A fault of the online service. My biggest criticism against Nintendo out of all this has been how they've handled saves. 
with oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. That the only way to back up your precious save data is to pay into this online infrastructure so that you can have access to cloud saves. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, like, look. Can I put it on a hard drive? No, or can't do any of that. Some kind of SD. I will nothing? not let Nintendo hear the end of it it's to lay crazy allow that you local can't. backup saves. Yo. It's crazy that you can't just save it to the SD card. Yeah. The thing has a built-in SD card. Fill me in, uh, Damiani. There's slot. no way. So there's game, no way. So here, no, no. no so here, it, actually, yeah. so here it is. What? It, yeah, it's tied to the game cart or it's tied to the system itself. Okay. Uh, depending if it's a or digital system. or a physical copy. Got so it. So if it's a physical copy, it's just like, you know, the old days, N64 cartridge, yeah, right. nothing like, or NES, 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 cool. saves. But the digital one is saved to the system storage, not the SD storage. Whereas on Wii and Wii U, you could do it on either and you can yeah. move them around. Now, saves starting with Wii U were tied to a system. So if you couldn't recover your account, like if your system got destroyed, yeah. or you couldn't recover your account, uh, some of your, your saves would be locked out. And on Wii, online game saves were locked out, like Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers Brawl, you were technically not allowed to transfer that between systems, but most every other save data, you could back up, do whatever the heck you want with it, share it with friends and stuff. Yeah. So I get like the whole thing about like sharing and stuff. I still wish that existed. Like It was easy to do share save saves like on GameFAQs and stuff like that. Yeah. But the very fact I can't just take my Switch, take save yeah. to the SD card, put... A ba- and then, then like put it into my computer and be like back up that folder. Yeah. So I have like it on my SD card, my system memory, and like in three different places. Yeah. And not pay for that other than like you know I paid for the computer and stuff. But I'm not paying for the service of being able to do yeah. that. I get cloud save should probably cost money because it's part of the service. But when that's the only means to do it, and every other of your mm-hmm. competitors offer so many different ways to back up your saves, like. Every the, this it's is the s- same song and dance every time this comes up, but I'm never gonna stop doing it mm-hmm. until Nintendo changes their stance on this because I'm gonna keep calling them out because it yeah. sucks. It's yeah. like it's a and very I mean, like, bad policy. Like PlayStation Plus, you get the cloud saves with PlayStation Plus, but you can also back up your yeah. saves. Yeah, like that's part of the thing. So of it's, like, yeah, it's like you're paying for that service yeah. when you upgrade your hard drive. You have those systems, especially Sony. Like the whole process is back up your saves and stuff locally, or you can do it the cloud. They give you so many different yeah. options. Mm-hmm. I mean, PC can do whatever the heck you want, and same with like Microsoft systems forever. They've like almost had yeah. some of the most customizable stuff yeah. uh, uh, with their stuff. Remember when you could play custom music on your games? Yeah, on Xbox 360. So well, such cool. A good moment yeah, in time. Was. But yeah, this is just What's, like uh, one of the times you did that. Damian? So uh, 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 definitely with uh, like Street Fighter Four nice. when it came out. Uh, we took a bunch of like awesome '80s songs <laughs> and put them in in place, and nice. there was there, like cool nice. '80s music. I remember uh, on PC when you could play your own songs in like Quake and stuff. Mm, too. Yeah. Uh, just wish Nintendo embraced that a little bit more. But I've gone off enough about it. Any any other things you'd like to see from online from Nintendo? Achievements. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trophies. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole episode about that. Yep. Definitely is a. Uh, uh, I think Nintendo's silly for not having those, but you know, yep. it's okay. Just uh, I'm a I'm a nuts and bolts guy. I like when my online is just fast and easy and efficient. Yeah. So just keep working on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I just I just as long as Smash doesn't lag online. Out uh, of the gate, you know what I mean. <laughs> like there's no excuse. It's so, twenty eight at the end of twenty eighteen. You know, the Switch has been. I out. can't see the net code on that game being solid. Like please, please, please be rock solid online Smash. Do you need to pay for this to play Fortnite? No. So the exception to the rule, they no, 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 put this out. Any game that is free to play uh, uh, is allowed to be free to that play makes online. Because I was going to cool. say, if that's so, behind the paywall, that would yeah, be kind of bizarre. That's yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. behind okay, the paywall. Okay. I think Nintendo kind of like I think it was Epic kind of like nobody's yeah. Nintendo. Oh, so you'll <laughs> lose Fortnite if you don't yeah. if you do this. And they're like, all right, no, 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 no. We'll uh, we'll, 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 we'll back Epic off. could probably just be like, Warframe, we'll just give you the twenty. Bucks. Warframe's another one. That, <laughs> oh uh, yeah, that you, makes sense. You do that as well. <laughs> Whew, yeah, that would be that would uh, be pretty weird. Yeah. Holy crap! Although, uh, do you need do you need PlayStation Plus to play Fortnite on PlayStation? I don't think so. No, no, nope. you don't. Okay, no. okay. No, 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 not at all. Nope. Um, I think the one thing uh, I saw something real quick about online was uh, they're using, especially for Splatoon 2, to using uh, peer-to-peer connections instead of dedicated servers, oh. which peer-to-peer, uh, as I best understand it, peer-to-peer is best for 1v1 type games, like fighting sure, games. Yeah. Uh, that's the desired kind of infrastructure you want, whereas like squad-based or large player-based games, you need dedicated servers. Need those dedicated. And if that's the trend where you're just paying for basically the privilege of connecting to someone else without using a need of a dedicated server, that is, a l- I mean, I know it's only 20 bucks, but it's also a little like, 
A little sketch. It yeah, is, draw, it's, dude. It's it's definitely something that's the right? most recent yeah. uh, issue with that was Friday the Thirteenth. It was mm. not dedicated servers. Such and a bad. It, 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 uh, there were so many times when the game just wouldn't work because oh. someone would leave, and then we'd all transfer to a new game, and then another person would leave, and then all of a sudden four people yeah. leave, and the game is dead. Like back out, go into a yeah. new game. Like that's not unacceptable. A fun experience, man. Not at I, all. I imagine it would have to be dedicated servers <gasps> for stuff like Vermintide, but like. Where it just works. Like if someone bounces, you get a bot for a while, and then someone fills yeah. it. It's just perfect. Yeah. Ah, we'll we'll see what Nintendo has in store in the future. Our next question comes from Brandon. Hi, allies. Jones. <laughs> Brandon Patton. Ah. Jones writes in. <laughs> writes in. Yeah, it's like thanks, Jones. <laughs> paid five dollars or i'll answer your question do you feel concerned at all that the switch is quickly becoming known as the best place to play other systems games rather than its own games from wii u titles to indie games to many third-party releases switch is exploding in popularity for playing games that were first released elsewhere the worry being that we may see a repeat of the vita within the next few years hmm. as the switch becomes underpowered next to when compared to next gen consoles do you see this trend continuing or is there a future where these games start launching simultaneously first or even only on switch <laughs> i i don't see it really becoming a problem because already for my money switch is the worst place to play huge power hungry games graphic yeah. graphical and cpu intensive games but it's the best place to play everything else like if there if there's an indie games. an older game, yeah. uh, I mean obviously the Switch exclusives are designed for the system, and mm -hmm. I don't think that'll ever really be a problem mm -hmm. until they just upgrade entirely. I think that the Switch is the best place because you can play it at the couch or on the plane, and like yeah. you can't beat that. And by and large, um, sure you get some frame dips here and there on some of these titles, but yeah, usually, the trade -off. yeah, usually the the smaller games are fine. Yeah, they're pretty close to parity on all that stuff. Like, There's, what is Dark Souls? It's uh, like thirty the, locked well, or the something. The Dark Souls. The problem with Dark Souls is that, and also the compressed audio. But oh. that's not. But that's okay, so real quick. The compressed audio is not a limitation of the Switch hardware. It's not that it can't handle it. It's the limitation of publishers being cheap because they don't want to spend more on the the size of the physical cartridges because they cartridge. are expensive. Yeah. Um, Nintendo offers up to, I think 32 is the biggest one. 64 is supposed to be coming. Uh, I forget if that's how accurate that is. They, they were working on making bigger cartridges available, right. but that costs a lot more for yeah. a publisher. And that makes sense because discs are like three cents, yeah. whereas those cartridges cost money. And Nintendo gets a lot of the blame for that. I see people like, oh, that's Nintendo screwing them over, but it's, publisher and choosing not to pay a bit more to get access to that right so it's a little i think it's a little bit of both uh, as part of the problem i wonder how people would respond i mean i i think they should not do this and it would be a bad idea but i wonder what the what the blowback would be if they were all up front about it like if from software was like the switch version costs 63 dollars because each thing costs us three dollars yeah. i mean i wonder what people would respond <laughs> with yeah. i mean it depends on the game i think Anger. if you're talking about like yeah. a specific instance it'd Angry. be negative because one you can get dark souls for cheaper right. on other platforms right, right, right. so you're already well, yeah, paying, and that one came out at 40 right yeah or something, but whatever uh so paying even extra for the switch version uh and being dubbed a switch tax or something like that no more yeah. ten dollar tax i can see yeah. that coming yeah to, it, i wonder if that's why They'll get criticism, but at the same time, people are also buying it. So right. it, it, it's a balancing act, I get. But, but it I is mean, a shame that 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 happening. that means like Red Dead or whatever, like fabled to have like what ninety hundred gig oh, download, yeah. whatever. Like that would destroy. Like you just couldn't shit. do it. Yeah. Like you'd have to you'd have to buy a hundred twenty eight. Yeah, and gig it's like your whole and cartridge, like your whole thing. You so there you go, it. Huber. That's that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to talk, so we if you want to talk about like ever getting big multi-platform third-party games back on switch again um unless so this let's talk about this real quick the streaming tech we've been hearing about yeah. there's been a lot of developments in the last few weeks um the rumors about the next consoles the yeah. next playstation and xbox using this google's own initiative going yeah. out there and people in think, browser wow it uh kind of works here 
So if this streaming tech gets up to place where it's indistinguishable from playing like a physical or digital copy, that is nuts. and it works, and Nintendo can get that tech running on their consoles, the Switch or whatever, yeah, I can see then there being a return. It's no longer a barrier. The hardware is no longer a barrier, and you'll see it because we already had the evidence of Resident Evil Biohazard Seven getting yeah. that thing. Uh, what was the most recent one that just uh, Odyssey. did it? Odyssey Thank on, you. in browsers, yeah. And I would not be shocked if either. Uh, Maybe not Devil May Cry, but if Resident Evil Two mm-hmm. uh, gets that in Japan, mm-hmm. uh, I mean the, that's yeah. I wouldn't doubt that. That's yeah. the thing. Like, look at the natural evolution of technology, and I know it seems crazy to us when, like, a couple years ago, I think was too early for every the Gaikai or whatever it's called. Oh yeah, all the, all the tech Before, that they yeah, everyone was freaking out about now, it yeah. for this generation of consoles. Online, I think it was publicly too online. early because everyone had yeah because no one had good enough internet at their homes, and I know there are still a lot of people who don't have banging internet, but like. Just think of the technology leap from when, like, the internet started when we were younger to streaming Netflix. (laughs) We're getting into the realm of feasibly streaming 4K, and, like, things are trending upward. It's always going to be faster. And the tech and the technology that you need on your end, on the base system, if the servers are running it and the internet is fast enough, is not super heavy. Like, the Switch could play the, could play, you know, whatever Red modern version too. of Crytek or whatever if the if the other Crisis. end is hosting it <laughs> and like uh if the internet is fast enough it's no problem and like 10 years from that. now internet internet will probably be so fast that we'll oh. like laugh at ourselves for like even thinking this is weird. Yeah, this I is mean, the- we're laughing at our younger selves now. Right. Dial oh up. gosh, right. yeah. Downloading <laughs> you know? a single JPEG took 10 minutes and now yeah. we stream yeah. JPEGs a second with <laughs> Netflix, like yeah. this. Yeah, this is what I want to believe in. This is what I want to hope it gets there. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna interject uh, a little, like uh, you know, a little activism message here. I mean, like, that's the word. In, in our yeah, in in, the, in our country right now, uh, if you like on this fence of like, hey, you know what the FCC is doing is good. Right. That stuff will uh, make this beautiful future that we're like painting a picture of. Not very realistic right. if uh, ISPs and stuff can throttle crap like that. So imagine yeah. if your system can only do streaming games and all of a sudden it's like, hey, you got to pay $10, $10 to $20 extra for your internet to be able to play your Xbox or PlayStation anymore yeah. if it's required. So I mean, yeah, that's the thing. AT&T and all those guys scary. don't want you to have good internet. They want to mm-hmm. throttle it. Yeah. Um, I do yeah. want to talk about... Also, uh, business internet is criminal. Oh, yeah. We're looking for, obviously, for a studio uh, and... I had my first I was I was I chatted the company. I chatted online with the company to be like explain to me why this trash is okay. And it's just not. It, it like the the brass they just tax can do it. the brass tax real answer is they charge it because they can. Like they can. it's like it's like a bo- a bag of saline being $1000 in a hospital because like they can. Here's it's insanity. Ice, 100 bucks. 200 or 20 megabit internet. 20 megabit internet for $600. What? Well, My, I have gigabit internet at home for $120 yeah. this is, uh, a month. The reality. Come on. Makes me putting, putting streaming. I'm upset. No, yeah, I'm, I'm on. I'm I'm I get, I get, I get mad you. about, like, very few sad. things in this life make me mad, despite I'm, I'm how I sound. And I think a lot of, like, business internet makes me real mad. gamers get upset about this type of stuff, too. Yeah, like, yeah. this speaks to them, I definitely Fast think. internet is very important. Putting the streaming tech aside, let's say, like, that doesn't happen, uh, I think... It then exasperates a problem for Nintendo. I think as Definitely. time as time goes on, especially for Switch, oh. it's going to get worse because mm. once those new consoles come out, yeah. Nintendo is without streaming tech. They're not going to be able to get even those like the the Doom ports or it's the, such a yeah, concern, the, 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 the yeah the Bethesda stuff. But like they're that's already go doing away. it. They're already doing it. They're doing it for now in but Japan. Oh, the streaming stuff, but. Uh, I don't know how well it went. I never got to try it uh, yeah, out. I don't know how it went. Uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't find anything on how well the like did it. Did, were they happy with it, or did they just still in the trying it out phase? I don't know enough information. Because Odyssey, you know, does like 4K but, HDR, and I doubt oh, streaming it on Switch could pull that off. Yeah, picture that, this though. So picture I, this. Thing. I don't know. Seven years from now. Yeah. Seven years from now. Seven, seven years. years. Seven, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Seven years from now, you take out your Batman cape. Switch console that becomes rigid when electrified, and you just you're on the train and you're streaming 8K 
Assassin's Creed 40 yeah. straight to your Switch, and it looks amazing. And, and like, you hook up your thing to your ear, yeah. and it like just reads your mind, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. you control it with your mind, so you yeah, don't yeah. have to have a controller anymore. Exactly. But, like, it's, but in your mind, you're like playing with a controller, so mm-hmm. like, it, that's like the dream. It's yeah. not like, I don't have to have a physical control in my hand, but like in my mind, I think I'm playing with a, think, any kind of device. I think that would be a better way to do it, because I was thinking about brain control, and like, oh, you just think whatever you want, but it's like... I think the the idea, at least for an intermediary, yeah, the idea like, of having a controller focuses your thoughts. I think people people get more advanced; yeah, yeah, they'll yeah, be able yeah. to yeah. deal with that. Like but our you, grandkids will be able to just yeah. Do you it. gotta have something analogous to like the, yeah, the yeah, physical yeah. concept to like ease people into it, but when, it also when, opens up like for disabled people as well. Like, right, something all that stuff for supporting that. This would be even a step further than that. Yeah, you wouldn't even need the physical anymore to Plus, do that. Steve, Stephen Hawking apparently thought that like. The next generation, like an issue, will become genetically modified superhumans, where people are just genetically modifying themselves to get better and better and better, and then they'll leave normal, unmodified humans in the dust because they'll be so intelligent and beautiful and strong that we'll be like Neanderthals compared to them. The Crazy enhanced, man. <laughs> the, the, the miracles. Deus Ex. <laughs> yeah. Cyberpunk. I will say some like some positive stuff about Switch's situation though, real quick. Um, I think it's great that it's in the place where it is for indie games, Wii U ports, and like other unique experiments. I'm glad that they found this new angle that doesn't involve motion controls, 3D, dual screen, some yeah. kind of like you know the G word gimmick yeah. or something. This is a gimmick that, that, that works. People, yeah. yeah, the fact that this is even a legit possibility is extremely encouraging. Because to me, the only problem with Switch is the hardware limitations. Mm-hmm. Is Comparing it to potential games that come out right. 2019, 2020, it's each year that goes by, it's going to fall further behind. Yeah, so but if this but just like, alleviates that entire problem. But the, it's, it's a game changer. But that said, though, like, and I, I know we've been talking about this question for a long time, but I think question. Nintendo has kind of always. I've said this before, but even since the 64. They've done weird things that kind of limit themselves, but also make themselves special and unique. Definitely. And they know how to design games and cater games to their own systems, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so, like, to me, the Switch already, yeah, technically, it's it's been left in the dust already. Mm-hmm. But because it's such its own thing and they cater to it and it's so special that I think, especially with first-party titles... It kind of is a weird non-comparison. The Nintendo's yeah, playing their own game, definitely. and they kind of have been for years. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, speaks to the fact that the Switch is a dedicated game system, yeah. much like a mobile. People like to bring up that the the Tegra chips that are used in like the Switch versus like current smartphones mm. and the the power disparity. What are they called? Tegra? Tegras, uh, okay. in, uh, Nvidia chips. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Switch chips should technically be inferior to some of the current smartphone ones, or I guess at parity. But Switch's performance is so much better because it has such a light, bare bones, like uh, firmware versus like the OSs, all these bloated OSs on these phones. That's why there's always going to be a place for, I think, for a dedicated gaming device because they're optimized for that. So optimization has a long way to go. It's a whole other conversation. But I think, quick, just to wrap this up. I think unique collaborations you might see exclusives or appear first on Switch, but any like mainline game, like something that's a Resident Evil, Call of Duty, uh, the what do I have here, Final Fantasy, you'll never see a, a not probably in a long, long, long time will you see a numbered one of those entries, mainline entries, sure. appear first or exclusively oh, on Nintendo. No, no. Yeah, that's. But I mean, like I've got three words, man. Four, four words. Four words. Breath of the Wild. And that's like, our next question. Ah, yeah, Breath of the Wild. Um, finish your, what you're going to say. Well, I was just going to say, like, that game is, to me, like, one of the best games ever made, incredible in every way, and it doesn't need to look like Call of Duty Black Ops 4. That's correct. Yep. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, Art t- style, I'm tired baby. of, right. I'm tired choices. of photorealism. Yeah, choices. I'm, 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 Artistic I'm choice. Board. It'll look good forever. Symphony of the Night. Next question but comes Resident from... Resident Evil 2 oh, Remake sorry. has really sorry. good looking gore. It yeah, does, there's, that, no, there's that dude's like, face, dude, yeah. <laughs> there's, freaks me There's out. still a place <laughs> for like <laughs> that, like, <laughs> like realism. I just think it's oh, yeah. it's done so much, and like I love to see a new artistic style or new creative expression uh, with yeah. use of an, a great use of an aesthetic highlight a game that doesn't need to be like a visual powerhouse, right, like yeah, on the yeah. tech end. You don't, you yeah. don't need photorealism to, to, yeah. to play with the big kids. Yeah. So speaking of Breath of the Wild now, our next question from Adam... Uh, hey all, believe it or not, Jones, Adam Jones, <laughs> Adam Brandon, Adam Jones, <laughs> Adam Brandon Jones. Uh, Jones, hey stop writing in. Just ask us. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to pay five dollars to support <laughs> Easy Allies. Hey all, believe it or not, 
I love the story in Breath of the Wild. Me I'd, too. I'd be okay if all Zelda games were just, you're in Link, Zelda's in trouble, grab a sword, Ganon's waiting for you in his castle, go. Why overcomplicate Obviously, <laughs> rich, char- rich characters and strong plots can help connect, help you connect to a game. Like, aside from Zelda, Uncharted 4 is my favorite game of the last decade for that, exa- for that exact reason. But there's a difference between a bad story and a simple one. Mm. I feel like I'm getting mm. enough fulfilling stories elsewhere. Uh, getting enough fulfilling stories elsewhere that I can be entertained by a shallow one if it's fun enough. Both types of games can exist. I agree. Yes. And yet plenty of people disparage, uh, disparaged it during Goaties. Are we reaching the point where a game lacking a deeper plot can no longer be considered great? No. Uh, how <laughs> disappointed will, no. How no. disappointed will he be if the next Zelda doesn't prioritize prioritize complex storytelling either? Not very disappointed. Thanks. I would be disappointed if it tries. Thanks, and have a good one. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like this is always like kind of like any, anything that involves like Zelda and story kind of gets like thrown at me and stuff. So listen, I want to say this: uh, <laughs> there are certain games out there that I prefer to play uh, for their gameplay only, and mm. I don't get to invest in the narrative with them. Like I don't really need that. And my examples are any of the Metroid games. Yeah. Like I can appreciate what they're trying to do, and I understand it. But like when I'm in the moment playing it, I don't I don't need it to enjoy what I'm playing. Bloodborne's a big one. I know a lot of you love to preach about souls like lore and stuff, but for me, it was just the atmosphere and the gameplay. I was just like, this is great. I don't yeah. I don't need anything else in this game. And the most recent Lengthy one, lengthy cutscenes would only get in the way. Most recent one, Hollow Knight. There yeah. are people who love the sto- like the narrative in that game. I I didn't need it to enjoy it. I really like that game. It's really good just on that. It's strong enough on that where it doesn't need it. I think it. I think yeah. the, the the twain shall yeah, meet. Sure. I think that Bloodborne, I mean obviously Bloodborne's my favorite game and I do think that uh, Breath of the Wild falls almost in line with that kind of storytelling style where it's minimal, it tells you what you need and then you fill in through noticing details like Breath of the Wild does a lot of environmental storytelling. Like that whole field with all the dead guardians in it, like or um uh yeah, ancient guardians, the machines. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh I feel like they tried to have it both ways though, and it ultimately cost them because when they leaned in on traditional storytelling and cutscenes, it wasn't engaging. It was hard to connect. All that other stuff is amazing, like when you're in the fields yeah, yeah. and you see like ruined castles and you put it all together is great. But then they'll come back and it'll just be like. That's like, funny like, to me. I yeah. didn't have that experience. Yeah. I, so, yeah, like the, the, the cutscenes and stuff like kind of pulled me out because they just weren't presented and, and for me they landed. Involved. They landed. I def. So I my perspective is I see that they were they're trying to have a bit of both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I I think it was incredibly difficult for them to like nail it like seamlessly and fla- sorry nail it flawlessly because they were trying something so ambitious with the design right, element right. of that game and they needed to nail that first I've said this like so many times before yeah. my problem wasn't that like it, it, you could do the either or or that when you did the or I want more story and it just didn't have enough for me my problem was just like the actual story itself uh, the narrative, um, I felt uh, like flaws with that. So it's not with that it was like a bad or simple story. Sure. Uh, sorry, the simple story was bad. It's just, uh, there's a part, I had problems with the, the actual, like, not the writing, but like what the actual plot was. Hmm. But I definitely would love a Zelda game that's like minimalist, like Shadow of the Colossus style. Like that type, yeah. like there's like if, like you're like if they redid Breath of the Wild, same exact game, but the narrative was like Breath of the uh, Shadow of the Colossus style where there's maybe an inscription on a ruin or something or something visual kind of clues you into like, oh, maybe something happened here and you fill it with your imagination. I would have had a great time with that. Yeah. Um, and a personal dis- disappointment was just like the payoff with like the Ganon thing. Like a whole nother subject and stuff. But like it was a personal thing. It wasn't yeah. that. I just want to reemphasize simplicity was not the problem with Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And uh, I think if they do the next game and they do the same thing, as long as the story elements that are there are actually good or I find them good this time, they could literally do the same thing they did in Breath of the Wild. And I would to like me it. to me, like the Ganondorf stuff, Ganon stuff was so secondary to the things I liked about that game. Like to me, every time I heard Koss, I just like like I would get so emotional. <laughs> I think a lot of the littler stories in Breath of the Wild were some of my were some of the standouts, Terrytown, Gerudo Village. I like more, all these things. I wanted more of that basically. Yeah. That but fun. I mean to me like they were enough and I got to direct the I mean for me in a game it's huge. You guys know like directing my own experience is really really important to me mm-hmm. and I think that that you know, an ounce of story paired with that for me, for me personally, is just the best way to get a story. So I wouldn't have liked 
them to put more in it. Thinking really, really. hard, like really on a deep level about it, Ian. Yeah, I feel like taking away the larger narrative, like cutscene stuff from Breath of the Wild would have made it an even better game for me yeah. knowing what it is now yeah, sure taking away that like ten thousand year backstory and stuff i, I liked I, that element because it made all the other games seem like weird mythical ancient history which is I, cool to that me that is cool I, just I like an, just, just cool. like an opening yeah. saying like just a line saying uh ganon's from ten thousand years ago or something <laughs> okay i get it don't worry about it yeah it's like, <laughs> it's like i get it like, okay so there is no like you've answered that there's no connection don't worry about that yeah. Just focus on like what you're playing and none of the 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 the, the development stuff about like I I guess they didn't need any of that in the end. It would have made me feel better cuz I would have start I would have used my imagination to like tell more of the story, which I think would have been a stronger part of that game. Mifa though. But Mifa. Uh so that emotional. was still good, but like th that's the thing. I wanted more of the champions. We were talking yeah. about like Terrytown and Cos. Except for like, less of uh what's his name? Re, uh, the Rito guy. Rivali? Yeah, yeah. He's he's just. A, I know he's supposed to be a blowhard, but like dial it back. I think yeah, I, I, it was <laughs> he was the one that was just kind of like ah. But with the Champions DLC story stuff, yeah, like that yeah. that was the story. I, you know what? That was the story I was looking for. I actually stopped caring about the Ganon stuff. I was like, yeah. oh, I know about this champion, this friendship, this camaraderie. Yeah. Like, can I get more of this? And I was kind of deprived of that till the DLC. And anyway, basically. It's I weird do. to get a motorcycle after you've already been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that is weird. The simple stuff is good. It can definitely work. And if the next Zelda game is that, I'm no, I, won't, I won't be inherently disappointed or anything like that, personally. Yeah. But I also see an avenue for them to be, uh, if it's well-written and it actually is a good story, I think there can be more narrative elements. But as you, Huber, you pointed out, like it was the back and forth, which one is it? Yeah. I think... If they haven't still figured that out, they probably would be safer going the simplistic route at I mean, this yeah, point. Yeah, Bloodborne has what four cutscenes in it? If you in a, a single playthrough, five maybe, not counting like variations. So like, yeah, I, Bloodborne baby. Yeah. Bloodborne baby. Bloodborne baby. We, we could have to do a whole episode of Just ideas for that. Yeah, the we could we could talk about Bloodborne for like, days. And what we want the sequel to Goody, be. Goaty though. It is the Goaty. Goaty. 2017 Goaty. We got it right that year. Goody. Blah, blah, blah. One was a 2017 Goaty as Goody. well. <laughs> no, yeah. Wait, Goody. it was. It was. Oh, well, not 2017, but 2015 or whatever. 16? Yeah. 15? Every year right? except Breath of the Wild year. <laughs> They're joint. It was a, it was a co, mm. co Goaty year. Oh. Uh, well, we got a. Uh, I have three more questions, Cody. but we only got about like 10 more minutes. So I think I'm going to. Lightning pick round. Do all three. Uh, yeah, I guess this one can be pretty quickly. This next one. Question eight from uh, Stephen Beaumont. Hey. Do you ever feel responsibility or feel you need to buy more games on the Switch to ensure its life isn't cut short <laughs> like the Wii U and that so developers continue to support the console? I just said no. Nope. <laughs> I, I don't feel that responsibility. I feel that preference. Like if I have the choice and it's not, again, a graphical powerhouse, I will buy it on the Switch. There are games I will not buy on the Switch because I want to play like the best visual experience of them. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles 4. I, I know I did review it on... Yeah. I was given a review. But if I had a preference, I would have reviewed it on PlayStation 4. If I was buying it, I would have bought it on PlayStation 4. Uh, I usually have a curiosity of seeing how a game will run on Switch. But like they just released Valkyria Chronicles 1 today on Switch. I've already played on PS3, PS4, and PC. I don't want to play it on yeah. Switch like again. Um, I, yeah. play, I play my PlayStation on a projector. So I clearly am not that concerned with visual fidelity. <laughs> Because it looks kind of like garbage. Like, I was playing Spider-Man, and I went to Omar's room where he has a 4K OLED TV. And, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> is this what this game looks like? Different I was game. like, oh, my God. Yeah. What have I been doing to myself? <laughs> uh, uh, Huber, yeah. Yeah. No, no, nope. responsibility. no response. No yeah. response? Uh, right. that it's. Uh, I have a responsibility to franchises okay. that I like. I will. will a responsibility. Sure, sure. A responsibility. Wow, you know? strong like, word. Yeah, like Shenmue comes out. Okay, they, they, that Shenmue responsibility yeah, yeah. Huber. Uh, yes, that's just yes, an yes. example. I mean, they yeah. they send us a code. I also buy a copy. You know what I mean? Oh, nice. So, okay, I see. Friend software. Yeah, Resident Evil Day Two. One. Like, chances are they'll send us a review code. I will also purchase a copy to support. There, it. Yeah, that's a good thing. I, there's yeah. definitely games I knew I was going to review or sign a review that I had pre-ordered. I ended up still buying it mm -hmm. because part of it is, I mean, yeah, like it, it, it's, it's one. Sometimes it's just showing support. Mm -hmm. Two, it's also I like the mantra of like paying for something that you're reviewing because that is yeah. part of the consumer experience. Totally. I'm not. T I really don't like reviews being to tell. I mean, you can use a review for 
wherever you want, which includes informing you whether you should buy a game or not. Yeah. I don't think it's my job as a reviewer to tell you if you should buy it or not right. in most cases. I think it's to talk about the quality. So, But I do think paying for it and like knowing that you had to like spend money to get in that experience does for that need to be factored in sometimes yeah. in, in that state of mind. So it does help kind of keep things honest that and way. I don't, I, the, the funny, the thing with us that I like is I don't think that that influences our reviews. Obviously no, at all. it really doesn't, but it's always been like a, a thing for me. If or like, possible. even like if you review resident evil two and purchase a copy anyway, like yeah. you can love that game and still get a fair score. Yeah. Like, yeah. Especially yeah. games that we don't get uh, before release. Cause yeah. can't buy them. Yeah. Uh, most every game I've ever had to review that came out uh, on release or after uh, I've bought myself. Uh, yeah. I think the most recent one we didn't get like early that I did was uh, last year was super Mario odyssey mm. i went out and bought it the day of and right. like oh, i'm gonna like here you go now i'm reviewing it and stuff yeah like i think that's yeah. important also another thing that i've done before is if i did get a game for free i will not think very hard about buying like microtransactions DLC or dlc or i'm like i'm 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 60 bucks in the in the red or however it works <laughs> on this game black red which one's good black is good black is okay good. i'm Red's 60 bad. in the black on this game like like yeah. like Odyssey, uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If I got it for free, I'll buy that ten dollar XP oh, bullshit. <laughs> Why not? Oh, God. That's a ten dollar game at that point. This next question, um, <laughs> uh, I guess you can answer it quickly. Um, it comes from Blue Koi. Hey allies, how would you rate Nintendo's mobile game efforts so far? Uh, the company has released five games that they developed or helped develop since announcing they would enter the mobile arena. Tomo, Super Mario Run, Fire Emblem Heroes, Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, and now Dragalia Lost. Mario Kart supposedly coming in 2019. Supposed to be due out by like end of March. Wait, which one? Mario Kart. Oh, I didn't know they were doing that. Yeah, it's uh, Mario Kart like tour or something. Um, wow. But uh, are there any other Nintendo IPs you would think would benefit from a mobile release? Do you think there would be any benefit of releasing NES, SNES, or any retro titles uh, as standalone buys or perhaps virtual console app of some sort on a mobile device? Um, so the only thing I've yeah. ever truly loved on mobile, aside from like Jetpack Joyride and stuff, um, in World of Warcraft, one of the expansions, you could, on the app, send out your soldiers oh. to do missions and stuff. You could do that in Black Flag, too. And Black Flag, same okay. thing. I, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff because it feels like you can kind of take your game on the go. You're getting optional Metagames, side baby. quest stuff. You know, you're, you're scratching that itch where, wherever you are. Um, you know, they're usually time-based. It's like, send your guy out for four hours. It's like, all right, I'll check back tonight. Yeah. I love integration like that. Um, something with, with a, like Animal Crossing, I think, could, could benefit. I mean, I hope Pocket they, Camp interacts with yeah, the like, new one. Like, well, they, that'd be crazy. They did, yeah. yeah, they did do that. Um, how, I mean, how do you feel, Ian? Before you um, I, like I liked Crossing. Pocket Camp. Uh, I liked it. Um, I played a heck of a lot of it. You beat it. I, I, I beat it, quote <laughs> unquote. I set myself a goal. I wanted the tree okay, house okay. and the tree swing. <laughs> and once I got it, I never played it again. There you go. Um, and uh, Pokemon Go, I know it's not directly like Niantic, only Nintendo, but yeah. But yeah. Um, I think that is, you know... There obviously were some huge missteps, but I think it's it's a cool game and a really good idea. Um, I think that Pocket Camp is probably the best Nintendo mobile game in my opinion so oh, far. Um, quality wise, quality wise, okay. and just playability. I think okay. I, I really liked how you played it. That said, I only the only other ones I played were uh, Mario Run Mario and Run's Mitomo. Cool. Mario Run was like okay, it's but I was cool. like all right. Like yeah. the the Rayman one was better, mm -hmm. so I liked you know maybe I, I mean I love Rayman, but. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, like, here's the thing. I'm not offended by them. Yeah. I think they can do whatever they want. They can do them till the cows come home, and it's fine. It's not really hurting anyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read from what I wrote just to make it snappy so I don't, like, drift. Uh, I think Mitomo was a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, Mitomo wasn't, was wasn't a designed to appeal to users for very long, so it had a very short lifespan. Um, but it was a learning experience that, like, you know, to learn what actually would appeal in mobile games. Super Mario Run, their second effort, uh, is a fixed price on mobile, and they found out it's hard to get that right. I think the game was still good. Yeah, it's just, they, yeah, they just didn't know how to price it right. Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing showed people, to me, from what I saw from all the things, it showed that people just want an actual Animal Crossing yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, they really don't want the what was Pocket Camp was selling. Uh, Dragalia Lost and Fire Emblem Heroes are their best efforts, in my opinion. Huh. Um, they're decent games that tap into the gotcha mentality, which yeah. seems to be like the recipe for success on mobile. They're um, like super gotcha-y, though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I would so I'd say quality wise, they're getting better yeah. mostly as time has gone on. Uh, money wise, Fire Emblem and Dragalia Lost are. Ra- I mean, Super Mario Runs brought in a lot of money, but like Fire Emblem Heroes, far and away is their best make- money making game. Dragalia Lost is inching up very right past Pocket Camp. It's catching up to the Super Mario Runs performance at the same time frame okay. in their release. It's starting to catch up, so it's doing very well. But I'm very curious to see what they do with Mario Kart, as I don't think a gotcha model is going to work with that. I don't think fans will let them get away with that, and I don't think there's enough mm. characters unless they go beyond the, the, the Mario universe. The cart customization. Cart, cart customization. That will drive people insane. People get mad, but they'll like... Get, they'll get... What if it's just cosmetics, Yeah, though. if it's only cosmetics. Because okay, if, if you get wheels that have better traction and you can pay for it, that's a no-no. Yeah. yeah. I'm also wondering how it's going to work because it's been shown that traditional handheld console games don't work with touchscreen controls, so they need some reworking. So I'm really curious how they're going to do this game. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that Game Boy phone casing, yeah. and yeah. this is the point. Maybe if that's a legit thing happening that uh, Nintendo's going to do, maybe retro style games can finally happen on on mobile phones and stuff. But a screen this what about, big. Uh, Mario and Rabbids. What about it? Something like that would do, be so. Oh yeah, like, like tactical. Oh, like, no, well, that's yeah. what Fire Emblem Heroes yeah, is. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. But they just don't. They don't do. It's like a watered down version of the main games. Yeah. But I think it's because uh, Mario Rabbids takes a long time to do a mission. So they'd yeah. have to be like micro size. Shorter. They'd have to trim some of it. Mm-hmm. That definitely could work, Uber. This it's is definitely viable. But uh, I don't know if it's uh, popular enough. And it, I don't know about like the these games. Like Fire Emblem wasn't the biggest franchise at all, mm-hmm. uh, and it like it started exploding in popularity. And I think it was a combination of that, gotcha, and some other elements. Uh, Timing is always. And uh, now it's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Uh, for Nintendo. This is a total aside, but please bring. Final Fantasy Tactics: War of the Lions Tactics. to Switch. Okay, Tactics. I agree with you. Yeah, like, I think it should happen. <laughs> even a remaster. Announce all those Final Fantasy games. It doesn't even have to be a remaster. Like, Square, just, just yeah. put it on the Switch, please. Put, yeah. Like yeah, the little or version. PlayStation, the, anything. Straight port. Hook us up. All right. <laughs> um, I don't know if we were, the next the final question was about like why do people want the 3ds to die? Here we've actually asked you this question multiple times on this. Um, I, I really don't like. I, I, I uh, basically it's a really long question, mm-hmm. and they basically are arguing. They make their points about why. So this question is from a uh, from Michelle Jackson. Mm-hmm. They argue why they think a dedicated handheld gaming machine is still better than what mm-hmm. the Switch does. Mm-hmm. Um, they have like cost, like the experience fits in your pocket, battery life, all these great arguments. Uh, and wants to know why people are like still in a, like a hurry for it to die. And I stuff. had a serious vendetta with the 3DS and DS because it was taking franchises I loved and and nerfing them down to be on handhelds. Yeah. And now that the Switch is out, all ill will is gone. You can <laughs> you can carry on 3DS. You know you're not hurting anyone now that uh, the Switch is getting those big releases, the mainline games. We're I getting think, Mario. Yeah. We're getting Zelda. I think so. for a while there was an impression maybe that. 3DS continued 3DS's continued existence was like somehow sapping mm. resources away from Nintendo Switch which is which true I don't because think they, is they, true because they merged their departments right. the mobile and console departments were merged yeah. they were supposed to be developing so like to be like have more synergy between right. the two so that argument doesn't really hold right. as much weight that's what I was going to say like yeah. I don't think that's the case and so I think yeah I think it's just kind of let it exist yeah it's not offensive yeah it's like yeah. Vita yeah well, I will say well, Vita. Vita's going down. Vita's dead. Yeah. Uh, still. Vita lasted longer than you thought. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's longer than you thought. So, I mean, there will be hey. a day when 3DS, they say, is... I still. bought I bought Just Dance for the Wii. <laughs> yes. I, I was looking through the calendar, Just the Ian, other day. And I saw that on the release thing. Like, <laughs> Ian getting Wii version. Because we brought up, I'm like, oh, yeah. That's I a pre-ordered. Thing. That's a thing that's happening. I pre-ordered Just Dance <laughs> for that's the really Wii. So awesome. Uh, I will I say... I think I still have my Wii. Maybe well, we, in my we, closet. Uh, play it on your Wii U, but you gotta play on the original Wii. Oh it's yeah. Like the whole yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to pull out my <laughs> Wii. What? I want to like scrape all the battery acid yeah. out of the Wii remotes. God, uh, do you even have so a Wii gross. Motion Plus, or do you just have like? The I don't even Wii? think I do. I never yeah, got a Plus. OG Wii controllers. Oh my god, that is a video and a half. The dongles. Oh, god, that's old school. Um, I will say for all the reasons that they, that they listed in their questions, like all these positives for why the 3DS, uh, why they love their 3DS. I will say, and along with Nintendo has said that they have, they still have an interest in a 3DS successor. 
Huh. They, they, they've acknowledged, they're like, hey, we're still looking into a 3DS successor, and that's not the Switch. I want to throw out there that the Switch revision next year is going to be a dedicated mobile version of the Switch. I was just going to say Switch. that. What if that's what the... Res- the yeah. Lower price, so even more appealing to families who may want to buy more than one, which Nintendo stated in a recent investor uh, Q&A is a major goal of theirs as they want to break the barrier of having more than just one Switch per household. They want multiple Switches per household. Making a more powerful version of a device, especially a handheld by Nintendo, only two years into the lifespan doesn't seem very likely to me. Uh, I, a light version seems more likely. Um, and uh, basically, that's the most I can see them doing. Yeah. Uh, the main reason I think that people view Switch as a hybrid or at least a mobile system, uh, and but also get annoyed uh, at uh, like that when a game's only released on uh, the older, inferior mobile 3DS version. Uh, is because I don't want to carry around two handheld devices. Uh, I just want to carry around my Switch. I don't want to have to carry my 3DS around and my Switch. It's an inconvenience. It's it's like competing for my pocket space or my my handheld, you know, my carrying space essentially. And it's just uh, it's kind of a nuisance. That's really the only reason. <laughs> uh, also, I, I always love the ability to play portable games on a screen if I want to. Love yeah. Game Boy Player. Loved uh, all the stuff we got access to at game trailers to play DS yeah. and 3D stuff on a TV. Very nice. Also, 3DS has had a great run. It's been yeah. out seven years, going on eight. Seven. It's got so a great long. library. Came out in 2011. Wow. It has a great library of games. You can't take that away from it. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think, at the very least, it needs a successor. Or if, if, that, if the Switch revision isn't going to be that, like idea i threw out there I, I i do think it will probably need a successor but i think it is getting close to time to move on yeah. from that piece of hardware Definitely. it is yes. it is weird in a world where everyone has supercomputers in their pockets yeah um i do i do think probably not yet and maybe not for another generation but i do think it's not impossible to imagine a world where where dedicated uh mobile gaming machines to kids seem strange and or antiquated like i could see that happening i don't know that i'm not saying that that is what i maybe think would happen but it's like I could why doesn't see it call people right or it's know? just like why i already I... I can do that on my phone yeah like i wonder i don't know yeah, yeah I, I, I i i feel like yeah it's difficult for you to envision a future where there isn't uh some kind of dedicated gaming unit yeah. device peripheral whatever it's gonna be i, I mean i can't well, predict the future tech but i might I might bounce back on what I just said because there is something good about tactile buttons and if if we do pie in the sky get to a reality where we just have like gigabit Wi-Fi everywhere that you pay for through Google or whatever and you can just use your dad's account, your mom's account, then it would be awesome to have a, a, a handheld thing that you can just stream Dark Souls 4 onto. Like, so I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Yeah, I could see that. I guess... I should ref- that's why I'm having like I should rephrase my wording on the like instead of device I guess like firmware software infrastructure like ecosystem I guess like yeah. Valve is the most analogous thing I can think of like a Nintendo version of Valve a Sony version of Valve where it's just like a storefront or something or mm. I, it's probably gonna be more than a storefront where it can exist on any device um, and that's where you get your your gaming experiences from them but they can exist anywhere but it's still dedicated to that. Like the crazy future, and what we yeah. talked about, it's gonna be like, yeah, you have like, giant mnemonic, instantaneously yeah. connections to anything that you want on any like device. It probably wouldn't even be a physical thing you hold because it's gonna be your like wired yeah. to your brain, so that like controllers can, are gestural. You still see you, the like controller. push buttons on your yeah, finger. Yeah, and you're still feeling the impact, the input and stuff like that, even though it's not there. Yeah, and it's gonna be on a screen that's not there. That you're still be able to see with your eyes because yeah. you do like heads up display in your eyes and stuff. <laughs> that's what's gonna be. It's gonna be yeah. like some crazy stuff like that. Yeah. But there'll always be like a did it, these companies. I think will just evolve and become like. It'll become service based. It just won't be hardware anymore. Right. It'll just become service based. I guess is the best way to put it. And I mean, I think that the the question with hardware of this nature, consoles and stuff like that, is like they always have to they they always cater to um sort of like the lower middle income bracket of society, right? Because you want to price it so that the most number of people can buy it. Yeah. Obviously, if you're very impoverished, you can't afford it. And if you're super rich, it doesn't matter and you could afford something more. But like, they want to hit the biggest swath of people. So they're limited in a sense by how much crazy tech they can put into it. So I do think with consoles, obviously you're like a few years behind every curve technology-wise. So I do think like 
the next handheld after the next handheld maybe would be the weird jump. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like we're never we're always going to be like five six years behind the craziest tech thing i think in oh, the in consoles, consoles oh yeah in the console and handheld that, gaming a, world that's always going to be yeah, yeah that's, that's for, always going to no, be the for case sure. is what i'm saying yeah yeah exactly and like for yeah so i think yep. the night the upside to that is crazy new tech gets hammered out by the time they put it in a mm-hmm. P- playstation or a handheld. ray tracing right ps5 right. ps5 is going to ray no, trace like a champ <laughs> ps6 ps ps5 pro Hubert. yeah yeah yeah, 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 pro. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro. <laughs> i'm waiting for that ps9 man the promise i just want to see that like, that, like floating Play- sphere that, that like reads Hubert. your thoughts playstation 5 rtx, RTX. <laughs> it's like what oh, here we go no <laughs> right, we here. Uh, uh, but that's and that's going to wrap it up for our questions. Um, I want to thank you to everyone who submitted questions for this week. Um, if you want, again, if you want to submit a question for consideration for a future episode of Friend Code, uh, the week we are recording, I'll put up a Patreon post for five dollar and up patrons calling for your submissions, and uh, we'll select the uh, we'll select questions. Usually, how an episode goes, we have news. I tell you what the news is going to be that week, or what we're the topics we're going to cover that week. You can ask questions related to those topics, and your questions will help drive the conversation by us talking about what you want to hear us talk about related to those topics. Unfortunately, just for the last few weeks, there haven't been any big Nintendo news. So, uh, calm again, calm before the storm. Yeah, calm yeah. before the storm. Hopefully, we have a deluge Ho- of holiday uh, new info. Info coming up. Be some good stuff probably coming in the, the the pipeline there. Hopefully, but as always, I want to thank you both for joining me on this episode. And as usual, until next time, may the way of the hero lead to the Triforce.